Sabbathandrightmass.net presents Sabbath versus Sunday, a quick overview of the meditation written by Joan Machado entitled Sundown to Sunday. Christians should be going to church on the Sabbath, Saturday, not Sunday. This is what many Protestants that call themselves Sabbatarians claim. Their claim comes from the belief that the Jewish Sabbath is binding on not just Jews, but Christians as well. The Sabbath is Saturday. The Catholic Church never changed it. The Catholic Church didn't modify it. The Sabbath is still, always has been, always will be Saturday. Or the seventh day of the week. Sunday is the first day of the week. So what is the Sabbath? The Sabbath is the sign of the covenant that God made with the children of Israel. Exodus 31 verses 12 and 13. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and thou shalt say to them, See that thou keep my Sabbath, because it is a sign between me and you in your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctified you. No matter what anyone says, this is a fact that is undeniable. The Sabbath is a sign of the covenant, the promise, between God and the people of Israel, and only the people of Israel, and is not to be confused with the land of Israel. This is why all punishments for breaking the Sabbath fell upon the Jews, because only the Jews were under the covenant with God. They were the chosen people of God. But to understand the Catholic faith and why the Sabbath is no longer binding, you must understand the Trinity. One God, three divine persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. St. John starts his gospel with, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In other words, before Jesus became incarnate, he already existed. This is why he says in St. Mark's Gospel, And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath also. Our Lord Jesus is saying that he was there when God made the covenant with the people of Israel. He gave the Sabbath. He made the covenant with Israel. By understanding the Trinity, you understand that God Father, Son, and Holy Ghost were present as one when the covenant was made with the people of Israel. Therefore, when Jesus was crucified, the covenant with Israel is no longer binding. St. Paul understood this in his letter to the Hebrews when he says, And therefore he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of his death, for the redemption of those transgressions, which were under the former testament, they that are called may receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where there is a testament, the death of the testator must of necessity come in. For a testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise it is as yet of no strength, whilst the testator liveth. A covenant is binding only until the death of one of the parties. This is why Jesus says in the Gospel of St. Matthew, Do not think that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For amen I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall not pass of the law till all be fulfilled. Our blessed Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, on the cross, 
the last words he spoke was the fulfillment of prophecy, the foretelling of the Messiah. For his last words that he spoke was, it is consummated. There are translations that call this, it is finished, or it is accomplished. That is a gross translation of the actual words that our Lord spoke. The word consummated means much more than just finished. It means completed, accomplished. By one act, he not only fulfilled the old covenant, completed it, but he instituted the new covenant by his blood. But before Jesus was crucified, he established a new covenant at the Last Supper. And whilst they were at supper, Jesus took bread and blessed and broke and gave to his disciples and said, Take ye and eat. This is my body. And taking the chalice, he gave thanks and gave to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which shall be shed for many unto remission of sins. And before the Last Supper, Jesus explains this new covenant. From the Gospel of St. John, chapter 6. Amen, amen, I say unto you, he that believeth in me hath everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the desert and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that if any man eat of it, he may not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eats of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove amongst themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say unto you, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you shall not have life in you. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath everlasting life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood abideth in me, and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, the same also shall live by me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth this bread shall live forever. This new covenant is an everlasting or eternal covenant because the old covenant will end. The Old Covenant was between God and the generations of Israel. All generations will eventually die. But in the New Covenant, Jesus will never die again, for He is risen. And if we die with Him, we will not die a second death, but live with Him for eternity. Know you not that all we who are baptized in Christ Jesus are baptized in his death? This is the meaning of the two wineskins. It is the two covenants. So Catholics do not worship on Sundays. We worship the Triune God every day, seven days a week, as prophesied by St. Malachi in the last book of the Old Testament. In chapter 1 verse 11 from the rising of the Sun even to the going down 
my name is great among the Gentiles. And in every place there is sacrifice, and there is offered to my name a clean oblation. For my name is great among the Gentiles, says the Lord of hosts. That is the sign of the new covenant. The only acceptable sacrifice day in and day out from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun is the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ offered to God in the Eucharist. And only the Catholic Church from the beginning has offered that acceptable sacrifice to God. No one else. Only the rites within the universal church of the Catholic Church. Only them has offered that sacrifice day out, day in and day out for 2,000 years. Sunday is not the covenant. It is the day that our Lord Jesus rose from the dead and opened the gates of heaven. Sunday is not the Jewish Sabbath. That is Saturday, the seventh day of the week. Sunday is the first day of the week. An echo we hear in Jesus when he said, I am the light of the world. For it was on the first day of creation that God said, let there be light. There is no greater denial of Jesus as the Son of God than to proclaim that the Jewish Sabbath is still binding. Because that would be a denial that Jesus is God and that he did not die on the cross. To get a copy of the book, Go to Amazon.com or SundownToSunday.com. It is available in both paperback and Kindle edition. Now, it's important to understand that this is a meditation. It's not a scholarly works. This is a meditation. I also included Pope John Paul II's apostolic letter, Dies Domini. Now that document is vague, obscure, difficult to read, difficult to understand. But it's there if you want to read it anyway. 